Yeah. Is there a thing that the, 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 the idea of the role of genetics in EMEA, something which yeah. has come up a little bit more over kind of recent years, what, what are your, your thoughts around that? Right, yeah, there's interesting research going on um, showing, you know, that the, the CFS gene or genes, so, you know, they can identify, which it's important, it's important research in the sense that if they do find certain genes in in people diagnosed with CFS, you know, it adds to the case that this is this is not just a psychiatric illness, it's a genuine physical yes. illness. But in terms of treatment for patients, I think pers- it's a little bit, we can get carried away from it. It's a little bit, my personal view is it's a little bit overrated because at the end of the day, even if, if they identify, oh, you have the CFS gene, okay, so what does, what does that mean? Um, I suppose what you're referring to is it's about gene expression that someone can have the gene for something and not, yes. not express it anyway. So that's the thing, you know, you're not it's not you're not predestined to get chronic fatigue just because you've got the genes. There has to be you have to have the environmental factors which make that gene express to then you know um, come down with the illness. So ultimately, you're still in control. The patient is still in control here because they ultimately control the environment. And if you create a toxic a stressful, you know, undernourished, underloved environment in your body, uh, it changes the environment in the cell which allows those negative genes to express. So it doesn't it doesn't have a huge amount of, you know, it, it comes back to this the same old thing again of kind of the same way that the orthodox approach tends to try and look for one shock cure, so a single drug that would switch off the prob- the key problem to the illness we're going to find a single gene and if we find that single gene we can cure the illness if you think about what we've talked about about all these factors that affect it um, and the multifactorial impact and the fact it's a process that is an interaction between the environment and all these different systems mind and body the idea that one gene that maybe you could you know switch off that gene or whatever would would cure the illness it's just it's overly simplistic it's not going to work i think it's it's um yeah, it's oversimplistic. It won't. It's not going to really come up with the answers. And it also it takes away, even if it did have improve a patient by the, a single kind of one shot cure. You know, Emmy. If we get a little bit spiritual here, but Emmy can be an, an experience, an opportunity. It's a wake up call. It's how have I, who am I in relation to? How have I been living my life? What do I need to become aware of in the environment, both from a pollution point of view as well as you know family, job, and everything else that. Um, it's a wake up call to looking into all of those things. And if you just went to the doctor and said, can you give me a pill for this, please? And then all that's gone. It takes away the opportunity for healing and actually having a transformative experience. And many patients who come out of that uh, experience with me, you know, they'll come out and say it was the best thing that ever happened to me, which some patients will definitely find that extraordinary at the moment, yeah. that it is possible that patients can say that. Well, it's interesting because you've talked at the start about your career change away from kind of working in kind of corporate banking into the work that you do now. And that what drove that change was the dissatisfaction side of yourself. And what you're really referring to is with something like ME, that often it's, it's a drive for someone to really explore themselves in, in these ways. Yeah. Um, so for people that are kind of watching this and thinking, well, you know, that sounds really interesting, but it also sounds really complex. Yeah. What, what, what are next steps for people to, to find out more about this? And so where, you know, people watch, is there anything they can do at home? What, where can they okay. go with this? I think, um, this, there's quite, there's a lot of free information on our clinic website. Um, you know, we welcome patients to go on there. There is actually a huge amount of uh, free information on there f- looking at, um, what not only detail about the specifics on how we treat the illness and how we approach it on both sides of the clinic which is the psychology division and the nutrition division but also um great information about patient recovery stories um uh, interviews on specific aspects of the illness um tons of information on there so it is this i'd say you know uh, go and have a look at that to begin with familiarize yourself with it um there's, there's lots of things to discover on there. There's also an opportunity on there to ask um, to actually sign in and just get a free 15-minute chat with one of the practitioners in the clinic, including me. So um, that's available as well. And also, what, what do you think, a couple of minutes left, what do you think about people who are kind of thinking, well, this all sounds great, do I just go and see a local nutritionist? Or can they, you know, there's books around there recommending supplements. Do you, yes. do you support people doing that okay. self-prescription, it's, that kind of thing? It's, a, it's really tricky because... Um, to anyone who's out there, and I, I say this a lot in my free 15-minute chats as well, 
if you if you're going to see a practitioner in the alternative area for treating chronic fatigue I would always recommend to go to see somebody who is at least specializing in the area because if there's a huge difference between seeing speaking to a, um, going to see a practitioner who maybe treats 10 to 20 ME patients per year to somebody who treats 20 per week it's not comparable the level of understanding the tools of understanding for somebody who's specializing it and we're not even saying our clinic anybody who's specializing in illness is going to have you're going to get a better standard of care so that's step one is if you can find out from the practitioner are they specialists or not and i always say go and go and start with a specialist first um good and also just in in the final little bit of time we've got left what do you hope the future holds for me as a as an illness and treatment and that kind of thing what, what where do you see it going over kind of coming years it, it's obviously accelerated hugely in the last five years even yeah i think uh, it would be great i think chronic fatigue is a challenge it's um it's a challenge to the medical profession because it's, it's interesting there's i think it's between 0.2 and 0.4 percent of the population have chronic fatigue but i've seen research that's about 1.5 to 2.5 million people just in the UK but I've seen research showing that 80% goes undiagnosed so there could be another 80% on top of that that have got the illness and I, I think this illness is on the increase um, and it's it's as it increases more and more people are getting it this the this has to be a wake-up call to the medical profession it has to be look there's something that all these people aren't just making up anymore um and it challenge is to me i hope it becomes the challenge to you know if they want to fix this illness you've got to start from a different paradigm of understanding about health and disease and i hope that that's what this illness will do it'll help to wake up the medical profession to start thinking a bit more less um, sort of to take into account a bit the, less reductionistic I guess less really, reductionistic yeah. more understanding about a biological systems approach process rather than these simplistic one shot cures funded by pharmaceutical companies so I also hope that um, the, the, the complementary and alternative medical um, approaches will get more validity us as a clinic doing clinical trials that we want to do in the clinic as well to help prove that's my job my aim is that we'll prove that what we're doing is working and to show that you know the answer doesn't always have to be a drug and other things aside from drug therapy are hugely powerful and impactful for health brilliant well thank you nikki for your time and thank you for watching conscious tv and hopefully we'll speak to you again very soon